Hello, I'm Graham Horton and welcome to today's video, which is a test and review of the new Godox WES system that's just been introduced by them. Now, this is the latest in the line of succession of 2.4 GHz wireless microphone systems introduced by Godox. I previously reviewed the WEC kit, which was designed to fit with mirrorless or DSLR cameras because it has the traditional 3.5 millimeter output socket. Now the WES system is designed to fit exclusively to smartphones. So we've got the WS1 kit, which is a lightning connector based device, which will go to iPhones and the type C connector, which obviously will go to the Android smartphones. Later in this video, I'll show you how you can actually use that type C in a variety of situations, which will enhance your audio and video productions. But first of all, let's have a look at the WS and how it compares to the WEC in terms of specification and the products you get when you purchase that device. So the WS kit comes with a charging case if you buy it that way. And inside the charging case, you'll get the two transmitters and the single receiver. Now, depending on whether you buy the type C or the lightning, you'll get the receiver which has the correct connector. This one is the type C connector, so it's ideally designed for the use with Android smartphones. The two transmitters are exactly the same transmitters as if you had the WEC kit. So if you bought a single WEC kit and you wanted to then migrate to your smartphone, you could buy a single kit and add this to give you dual functionality with two transmitters and the one receiver. But a word about that in a moment. So we've got the two transmitters here in the charging case. So the charging case has its own inbuilt lithium-ion battery, which will provide charge for these roughly two times from a full charge on the internal battery. The receiver is powered directly from the smartphone, so there's no battery in here, so you don't need to worry about the charge running out on the receiver. You get a good eight hours worth of play from these uh, transmitters in normal situations, so plenty of recording time available with those devices. So this will plug into the port on the bottom of your smartphone and then they would connect wirelessly to the two transmitters. Now in this video I want to try and establish whether these will live up to the expectation of the specifications in as much that they say with line of sight you can get 200 meters with these devices. So that's over 600 feet. So I'll test that out when I move from this location to the football playing fields behind me where we've got a great dis distance there to work with. Now it's quite a good windy day today so it'll be a good test for the uh, lavalier microphones in terms of the digital noise reduction. So we'll be able to use the wind muffs on the transmitter and also apply digital noise reduction which may get rid of some of the background ambient noise we can hear out here today. Now, in terms of the transmitters themselves, you can have two people set up for an interview with these devices, but unfortunately, the receiver combines those two individual TX tracks into uh, dual mono tracks for your collection by your smartphone. So when you come to edit this, you won't be able to separate, separate out track one and track two if you've got an imbalance in the voices between your two uh, talents. Unlike the WEC kit, you can adjust the individual transmit levels on each of the two channels. So you can actually separate them out and give you a better balance if you have an imbalance between the voice levels of the two uh, talents. So with this system, it's dual mono and you can't separate out those tracks, unfortunately. Now, when I started to look at some of the first reviews of the product, it was obvious that some people were talking about the Godox mic app which is available to set the gain of the receiver of this device. So when I downloaded the uh, Godox mic app, it allowed me to set the gain of the receiver to suit the inputs for my smartphones. Unfortunately, again, you can't set individual channel gain. Whatever you set to one channel will be set to the other. And you've got the facility there to turn on the noise reduction from weak to strong. Now, you can use that noise reduction facility on the transmitters 
with the button, the little orange button on the transmitter, which allows you to switch on or switch off noise reduction. And again, that will work from one transmitter to the other. So if you press the noise reduction on transmitter one, if you've got transmitter two powered up, the noise reduction will also cut in on that device. So you can't set individual noise reduction for any one track. And it's the same if you do it from the app. If you set noise reduction uh, from the app, you will set noise reduction on both transmitter one and transmitter two. You can't separate that out. What I'm going to do now is switch over from using the Hoem Micro One series, which I normally use with the Blackmagic Cinema app running on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and I'll install the uh, Godox WES kit on the iPhone 15, which is not supposed to work because of the fact that the uh, version of the WS kit for iPhone is the lightning connector so it, it only relies on the fact that you can use iPhone 14 and below to use this device but as future iPhones will always have a type C connector it would make sense for them to develop a system which will work with the iPhone 15 Pros or later models it will work but the app that's supplied with it will not allow you to change the mic or, or the receiver volume so you've got to set that by using an android phone or an android tablet to enable you to set the mic levels should you need to but with the default level set to level four you'll probably find that's fine so i'll switch over now to the godox system and you can see what it's like I've now switched over to using the WES system on the iPhone 15 Pro Max and using the Blackmagic Cinema app to record this video. So this is the transmitter. It's the same as you use with the WEC kit. We've got the electric condenser microphone in the top, which you can cover with a furry windshield. But a note about that, it is very weakly fixed to the top of here. And in fact, I've lost mine a couple of times uh, in today's video. So I've had to retrieve it. So just be aware that it can brush on your coat and come off rather easily. On the side of the transmitter, you've got the power button and we've got the uh, orange button, which allows you to set up pairing if you lose pairing between the transmitter and the receiver and also the facility to turn on the digital noise reduction. There is an indicator LED on the body of the transmitter which would show green if you're in the non-noise reduction mode or it will show orange if you're in the noise reduction mode and it will also flash when you're starting to lose battery voltage on the transmitter so you've got an indication as to the battery status if you are using the app to monitor it you can actually see the percentage of the uh, battery level on that device but it's not available through the standard app on your phone so this is the audio quality from the transmitter with the included fur windshield and again it's dual mono so i've got the one transmitter here but we're getting a dual mono track on the recording so that is the the problem with this kit you're not going to be able to separate out transmitter one and transmitter two i'm going to do a range test now and i'm going to first of all do a very simple uh, about 30 meters which would be the normal distance that I would ever consider using an outdoor wireless mic at. Remember this is a 2.4 gigahertz radio signal it isn't an FM um, UHF signal which would give you much better audio quality than the digital recorded uh, 2.4 gigahertz. The more we get into uh, equipment with 2.4 gigahertz transmission frequencies, the more there's a possibility that we'll get some interference. And this system doesn't have any backup facilities. There's no inbuilt micro SD card to record a redundant audio track there. Um, so beware, if you do lose connection from your outdoor broadcasting, you'll lose that audio in your receiver. So you are go uh, gonna lose that. So there is no backup facility in this system at this price point. So I'm going to walk to that tree over in the background, which I guess is about 30 metres, but I'll check that uh, with my watch as we move along to make sure we're getting the right distance. So let me uh, start that working. Right, so I'm going to start walking. I'm going to turn my back to the receiver so that we're blocking the line of sight. So I reckon at 30 metres we still should be getting a good audio signal. So let me start walking.
<clears throat> uh, you can see now that again the windshield has fallen off from the transmitter as it brushed onto my coat so be aware that if you're outdoors you can easily lose this uh, fur windshield so I reckon I'm about 10 meters away now that's 18 feet according to the watch I think that's more than 18 feet it depends on the update right it's just updated so that's 34 feet or roughly 10 meters which I I thought it would be let's move further on now uh, I guess I'm about 20 meters now let's let the watch update that's 54 feet let me move further out to this tree at which point I'll turn around. So we should be getting a good audio signal at this distance with my estimation. So let me turn around. That's 120 feet according to my GPS watch here. Let it update. 128 feet. So that's 128 feet from the receiver line of sight so there should be no issues and again i'll just turn around and hopefully there's been no dropout from the audio at this distance so up to that sort of distance you're going to be fine with this kit so let me walk back so we're coming back to the kit and then we'll move location and i'll try and do that 200 meter test to validate that line of sight issue So you can see that I've now changed location to the football field here and easily get 200 meters in this uh, field here to uh, test the range. So what I'm going to do is to walk again with my back to the receiver and um, at every uh, 100 feet I'll um, turn around and check that the, we are getting uh, uh, audio at line of sight for every 100 feet. So uh, excuse my back but I'll be off and we'll see how we get on. To one. Uh, this is an outdoor test of the WES wireless system and to see what the range is with line of sight. At the moment I'm around about 50 feet or 60 feet when the watch is just updated. That's 84 feet, 90 feet, so that's about 100 feet. I'm going to turn around so we should be getting good audio at 100 feet as this is supposed to be able to transmit for 600 feet. So I'll continue to turn around and we'll move further downfield. <clears throat> We're going quite an overcast day. It did start off with a bit of sunlight today, but unfortunately it's now cloudy over and rain is expected. Probably in about another 30 minutes according to the weather forecast. So that's at 150 feet. It's just updated 160 feet. That's 183 feet, so we should be coming up to 200 feet. That's 200 feet. So I'm now 200 feet away from the receiver. Line of sight, so we should be having no issues here. We should be able to do uh, three times this distance according to specification. So let me carry on walking. <coughs> so probably we've lost the audio signal at this distance. I wouldn't expect it to be giving me an audio signal uh, with no line of sight at this sort of distance, but we'll continue to walk and carry on. So I'm now 200 feet away from the receiver. Line of sight, so we should be having no issues here. We should be able to do... Uh, three times this distance according to specification. So let me carry on walking. <clears throat> so we're now at 420 feet away from the receiver. That's me there, 420 feet away. Uh, good job there's no one else around or the camera could have disappeared at this point in time. So that's about 430 feet according to the updated figure on the GPS system. So I'll carry on and we'll go up to 500 feet and then on to 600 feet, which is the theoretical maximum distance that this should be combined at. So there we are now at 610 feet or really 200 meters which is the suggested line of sight transmission distance for this wireless transmission system. If it is, fair enough, but I don't think anyone will be using this system, but we needed to check out that specification. So I am facing the receiver now, so we should be able to pick any audio up clearly at this sort of distance. So I'm coming back to the transmitter and we'll conclude this uh, review. When we get back to the transmitter, I'll show you the digital noise reduction, which is there to cut down on the ambient noise. Unfortunately, it does start to clip some of the normal audio range, so be aware that if you do enable that, you might just lose a little bit of audio quality, but for normal amateur purposes, that's probably uh, okay. It's by no means a professional system, um, but it's good for 
serious amateur work and you want to get better audio with your video productions, especially if you're using smartphones uh, to produce stuff for social media. So, great system for that, thoroughly recommend it. If you want more flexibility, use the WEC kit, which has the 3.5mm output jack, so you can either use that to your smartphone or your mirrorless cameras to get better audio, which does have the stereo track rather than a dual mono. And here we are, back to the camera. So there was the range test at 600 feet, 200 meters. Um, we'll be able to see from the video uh, just where that cut in and cut out. Now there is a bit of audio noise here, there is some building work going on, there is a main road about 30 metres away. So what I'm going to do is just stop talking for a minute to give you a sound of the ambience without the noise reduction turned on. And then I'll turn on the noise reduction and we can see what effect it has on, first of all, my speech and secondly on the audio level. So that is a section of ambience. Now I'm just going to turn on dynamic noise reduction. And to do that, I'm just going to press the orange button here, which will turn the green light to amber. That is the digital noise reduction turned on. So again, I'll stop talking and we can look at the ambient noise reduction. So that is a sample of the ambient noise with digital noise reduction turned on. It does suppress it and um, can give you better audio under some circumstances where you might have air conditioning noise or fans in a room, uh, crowds and that sort of thing. It might be able to help reduce that. So uh, a value of addition, providing you find that it doesn't impinge on your audio too much. So this is a sample of the uh, digital noise reduction with normal voice content just to show how much it does impinge on the audio quality. Well, I'm going to finish the review here, it's been quite a lengthy one for you. Uh, hopefully you've uh, established whether this system is suitable for you or not. But what I'm going to do now is return to the studio and show you how you can use the USB-C type of receiver with things like your MacBook Pro with the USB connection to give you better calls for things like Zoom or team meetings or OBS. If you've got the uh, earlier Macs with a USB-A socket, then obviously you can use a USB-A to USB-C adapter and that will work. And you can also use this on Windows system. Again, if you use the USB-A to USB-C adapter, you can have some great audio for your uh, productions using Windows or using the Mac OS systems. You can also use this obviously on tablet devices and again if you've got Android tablets you can use them directly with the USB-C or again use a dongle to convert from the micro USB to type A and then a type A to type C adapter. Bit of a uh, ring and run but you can get some great audio using that system. This is a test now using the late 2014 27-inch iMac using the internal 720p camera and using the Godox WES microphone system. See the transmitter here. The receiver is plugged into the USB-A socket on the back of the Apple uh, iMac using a USB-A to USB-C adapter so I can plug in the receiver into that port. So you can see you can get decent audio which you can use to transcribe into documents or in uh, OBS or Skype or Microsoft Teams meeting to get some very decent audio. Well, that's it for my review of the WS system. Hope you found that useful. Of course, if you're a new viewer and you're liking how these reviews go, why not hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon at the same time to be advised when I upload new videos to the channel. Also check out my photographic blog. I'll put a link to that in the video description below. You'll find lots more information on audio devices and in particular on the Panasonic Lumix bridge cameras and some of the Canon mirrorless cameras as well. So if you've not already seen that, do have a look at it and enjoy. So until the next video, thanks very much for watching. Please do take care 
and I hope to see you all very, very soon. Goodbye for now.